And Paul is back. He's been gone for a little while, but he had taken these doors out about a month or so ago. Where they're setting up. And let's go and take a look at them. These doors were completely, completely falling apart. And Paul took them back to his workshop and restored them. And they look practically brand new. And when I say they were falling apart, I mean they were really kind of um, droopy on one side. They, they were just not in good shape. I think most people might have just completely replaced them, but we knew that Paul <laughs> is probably one of the few people that really could actually bring him back to life. Was it hard work restoring those doors? Uh, just time consuming, really, because they had to all come apart because they were all, um, all the joints had gone and uh, they were all dry and all the pins had gone in them. So it's basically just a case of stripping them right down to nothing, all, all the component parts. And then uh, tidying up and fixing any bits that were wrong and then putting them back together. <laughs> nice and square, with lots of glue and new pins. It's, they are very square looking. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I remember. They were very unsquare when you took them out. <laughs> Paul is digging out Mr. Brushy. Oh, look at Mr. Brushy. <laughs> there, uh, so Paul is taking out the whole framing and the windows above. It's interesting because we can now see uh, where the floor is in the attic. And uh, you can just kind of see like the, the beams there and stuff like that. The design is interesting because one, obviously one of the main supporting beams is right in the middle of the doorway and no one thought that that would be an issue when they built the house <laughs> or built this wing um, and put a window in front of it. It's sort of an interesting choice, but the whole door frame and all the windows are out. You can see the windows are over here and you're taking both windows, Paul? Yeah. Okay. So Paul is taking both of these windows so that they can get tightened up and restored. So it's the rectangular one and the half circle one below. And then this whole thing gets covered back up with blue tarp until we have the rest of it in place and we get everything glazed. Ben is taking apart this green cabinet. This has been in our temporary kitchen for a couple of years now. We're using it as our basically storage and countertop. And we actually got a new buffet and put a countertop on it to use while we're working on this. This cabinet is going under the sink in the main kitchen, which is right here. Sorry, is it's going under the window <laughs> in the main kitchen, which is this window here. Uh, and we'll have a sink in it. So it'll be some additional storage. And uh, there's been a lot of debate about what we're doing about a cabinet for that sink. And we decided to use what we have in the chateau, it's been here, it's been part of this house, and it was originally in this room that it is in right now. So, which is why it's actually painted the same color, a Kelly green as the famous big cabinet that's in the butler's pantry, which is where we are. The problem with this, it was just a little too long. And so Ben has been tasked with cutting it down. And Mark had a discussion with this morning because he was looking at it last night and was just concerned where the cuts were. But I, I assume it's all been worked out and everything's okay. Yeah, they're all good. They're all, uh, glad you take the camera around and you can see how it's all going to be nice and flush here. Yeah. So this side of the cabinet ah. has a slight overlap, which hides the back ah. end of And the... that's what he wasn't seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mark thought that Ben cut a little too much, like just a little bit, but it's really attached to the side. So this is the side. So this side, uh, Ben took it off. It was here. It was there, and we're cutting we're that. Door. Right, and it's gonna move, now, now it's coming back in. So it's going there. Yeah. Excellent. But I noticed we're taking this side off too. Well, 
Because at some point in history, this door had an accident. Quite a while ago, you can see here, there's a yeah. chip taken out. Yeah. So the hinge didn't fit in there anymore. Uh, so they cut the sides off and replaced them with these hinges. Yes. The idea now is to rebuild this properly. Right. Get some new pivot hinges. Oh. And then I will recreate the whole thing as it was originally. So oh, these, interesting. these will come away and we'll... Right. So we have to find we'll these properly. other pivot hinges. Let me look at that real quick because I did note yesterday that the hinges on the rest of the doors, see if I can get an image of it. Does this one open? I've got some hinges here for you. Okay. Oh, this one doesn't open right now. Um, sorry, now I'm holding the camera all askew angle. They're, they're mounted on the bottom of the doors. Ah, uh, here they are. So here we go. So these are the, the, the pivot hinges. These goes right. top and, and down. Bottom. Right, so they're mounted on the bottom and the top of the door yeah, towards the corner. Yeah, they slot into the undersides of these. Right, interesting. Yeah, and somebody had broken this door. Yeah. So we'll take these off, we'll recreate this corner, we'll shave it down, make a nice piece, get it glued in right. tight. Once that's set, we can relay the pivot hinges and to normal, but we'll need to get some new pivot hinges, which, right. you know, they exist, you can get them. And you can see, this is the top. I'm just going to get down here. It's a little hard to see, but there is a warpage, <laughs> it, it, and it's quite significant, actually, on the top. So we're actually uh, not using this top, mm -hmm. partly because it's warped, but also, let's go into the big kitchen, partly because... Uh, we have the window here, which is deeper. So let me just scoot around here. That cabinet base is going here, but it's it's a the top of it is above above the ledge here where the window is. And so when we we're gonna probably cut a stone top that will cover the whole thing and fit into the little nook for the window. Uh, so there'll be a little more depth to the cabinet when we're done. Because that cabinet was in the butler's pantry with the sister of this uh, large armoire, even though it's not exactly the same, uh, you know, match in terms of the structure of the doors and the panels, it, it, it definitely goes with it. It's, uh, it really goes. And also, it will keep to this kitchen when it's done. It will really, I hope, have this feeling of an old kitchen because uh, it is an old kitchen <laughs> where you didn't really have built-in furniture. It was furniture was made and brought in and just, you know, like regular furniture, you could pull it out and move it around. And it's going to have continue to have that same kind of feel and not have uh, a sense of like a fitted, exactly like a fitted kitchen. It's, it's really going to bridge the gap, I think, by the time we're done. Been on Stephen, who's working in the Ramsey Suite. So the Ramsey Suite is a sponsored bedroom, and our sponsor, the Lady Anne, uh, liked the wall finishes going on in the dining room with the andouille and then the paint. The andouille is the finishing plaster. <laughs> And, uh, I couldn't get in. The door was caught on this extension cord. <laughs> Hello. Uh, just a visit pour le, de voir la finissante de le mur. So we're just visiting the, look at the finishing wall. Oui. Okay. And Sasa too. Sasa Ponce? Sasa Ponce, right? So the, the wall here has been uh, enduit and sanded. Like a baby's bottom. Oui, que de bébé. Excellent. It's exactement que un peu. Oui. Après, il y a un peu le genre qui ressort. Ah, oui, oui, oui. Mais ça, c'est parce que le mur n'était pas totalement droit et en fonçant. Oui, oui, oui. Après, avec le badigeon... Oui, exactement, ça n'a pas un problème. Oui. 
problem. We, so Stephen's pointing out that um, there's a little yellow showing through because the walls were painted yellow that kind of stressed out the color. And he's saying because the wall isn't like perfectly flat, so it's old wall, <laughs> um, that some of that's coming through when he sands. But when we put the whitewash on as a, as a base, uh, you know, it'll all get covered up and it'll be fine. And it'll have a nice, a nice smooth texture. And that's exactly what Anne uh, wanted. She just, uh, after it got painted the first coat, she just uh, wasn't quite in love with the texture of the finish. And I think it, really after she saw the dining room walls, which got this kind of treatment, she was like, oh, that's what I want to have in this room. So he really has this, this wall of the fireplace left, this finished sanding. And then it can get the Bejidon, which is the whitewash, which is being used as a primer. Uh, and you can see he's wearing good protection because the sanding, you can see copious amounts of fine dust in here. Plus, the window is open. Let's take a quick look out the window. And then I'm gonna get out of the dust. It's really, it's a beautiful day. This room is in the center of the house on the back. And there are five bedrooms on the back of the house. And all five bedrooms really have this glorious uh, view over the valley. Uh, these trees, which are planted on the terrace in the back, uh, they were just put in a couple of years ago. They've grown quite significantly. And every year we start trimming them back. We want them to end up kind of forming a canopy together. It's going to take some time to make that happen. And we don't want them to go much higher than they are. So we don't want them to come up and block the views. So we're going to keep them lower so that the canopy of the tree is kind of between <coughs> the lower floor and this floor. So we have the views up here and we have some uh, shade down the back. We are facing, I think, about southeast in this direction. And we get a lot of sun in the morning and through the afternoon. Uh, usually a little after lunch, and now in summer, maybe around 2 or 3 o'clock, the sun passes over and it starts to shade the back. But in the morning, it was quite sunny out here, so it's quite hot. But this is one of the features that attracted Anne to this room. She really loved the one, the, the fabulous views it has. And also, this is actually one of the smallest bedrooms. And she, that, she found that very endearing. It's really a jewel of a room. It has these two little windows that face into um, what was dressing rooms, but will be a, a bathroom, a shower room, and a, and, a, and a water closet. And it really has a very pretty, simple but pretty uh, fireplace. Uh, with some nice, lovely plaster work above it. So it's gonna be a very, very charming room. And although it is one of the, it will be the smallest bedroom in the house, uh, it's still quite comfortable. It's still a good sized room. So yeah, it'll be really quite charming. It's most likely that this will be the first bedroom we finish. We're sort of been doing a lot of work in here and I think we're, we have everything we need to get this room done. And so it will be probably the first one that gets finished. I don't like to say for sure because sometimes <laughs> it's got holes in the plants change a little bit. And we are going into summer, which means a lot of people are going on vacation. So <laughs> we shall see. Uh, all right, I'm gonna get out of the dust as I can feel it in my throat. And since I'm here, there's not a lot of light, but you can see pop in. This is going to be a shower room. So it's just gonna be a shower and then a sink. So it's small, but gonna be very pretty and elegant. You can see the little window above. And if you look really closely, you can see it has like a marble texture. That was a faux paint marble texture that was done. And if I turn it around, there's going to be a door opposite it. And this is going to be the half bath. So again, it'll be a sink and then the toilet in here. Um, so it's small, but actually for a half bath or a, a water closet, it's, it's actually quite comfortable. And again, it has a window. There is going to be glass in those windows and of course, this will get finished out. Paul, who's been doing the woodwork, has actually made new frames. Just to give you orientation, I walk straight across uh, into this room, which is currently the, the saw room. <laughs> You'll see the straight across, this is the front of the chateau. I'm literally over the entrance door and we're looking out over the courtyard of the chateau. So it kind of gives you a little orientation. Uh, that's Hugh's son, Joseph, who's helping out today. 
And he was just power washing the wing of the house. It's looking much better. Look how red that um, that sort of crown is. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yesterday, Hugh took down the pots that were on top of the wing and discovered. What did you discover about the pots? They weren't secured at all. They were loose. They were loose. They were literally just sitting up there. Yeah. And we're all surprised that they haven't blown down. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and uh, he's been weeding <laughs> the side of the, the face. <laughs> uh, and now he's just power washing to get it all cleaned up. And yeah, that's very interesting how much, how much redder that terracotta is, those yep. bricks are. When you compare it to the other side that I haven't done yet. So, right. so it looked very similar to that <laughs> before he started. Yeah. Excellent. It's looking good. Welcome to the news. I'm Judy from Chateau Avensac, your newscaster. In the news, a very, very, very big surprise. We have a new person working at the Chateau, and her name, yes, you heard me, her name is Margot. Let's cut to correspondent Philip, who will fill you all in on the details. Philip? We've got some work going on in the dining room. Uh, finishing work on painting and sanding. And you'll note that Ben is in the butler's pantry. But we have someone new working in the dining room. Hello. <laughs> this is Margot. Hello. And uh, Margot's been helping out with prepping and sanding. I <laughs> and why why are we not wearing masks? Uh, because I've been wearing masks all, all day. Okay. So you just pop up at the moment. I was like, I need a break from the mask. <laughs> so obviously you've been sanding the rail. Yeah, everything is sanding, and uh, then prime up, and then paint. So your focus has been on the woodwork. Yeah, woodwork for now. Yeah. Um, it's mostly everything by hand, so it's a bit endless. Yes. <laughs> But yeah. it's nice that um, it's a nice work for me because I've got to be very careful and I like that and I've got to be very precise and careful. But at the same time, it's very frustrating because you don't see any changes really. Ah. So you're like, am I doing anything? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It's... I find out it's sad and you just have to feel it. Like you feel exactly, the change. Exactly, I've got to remove my, my glove all the time and be like, okay, that's it's this bit is done, this bit is done. But... Yeah. Excellent. And I think we have the paint for this, right? Is that right? The primer? Uh, the color. We have the color, right? Yes, I think but we do. But we have don't have a primer. We don't have a primer. Ah, okay. <laughs> Mark, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't, yeah, we'll, we'll have to get him on that. <laughs> All right. But it's not as if I need to, like, write now, is it? It's like... There's a little time. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Carry on. <laughs> Thank you, correspondent Philip. Isn't Margot wonderful? She will be doing lots of finishings at the Chateau, and you know what that means. Calor, calor, calor. And of course, well, 
Judy will be choosing them. Also in the news, our dear, dear friend and patron, Bonnie Jean, sent a lovely photograph of herself wearing her Chateau Avanzac black satin jacket on the coast in Mexico. Bonnie Jean, it's a beautiful photograph and we thank you dearly. Remember everyone, if you have Chateau Avensac items and you want to send Judy a photograph, you might end up on the news. It's July in the Gers. Le Gers is where the castle is and the fields surrounding the chateau are full of sunflowers. It's a sea of yellow everywhere you look. It's no wonder that so many famous painters came to the Gers to paint the sunflowers. Now it's not impossible that next year the Chateau will offer a special retreat for doing that very thing. So keep your eye on atthechateau.com to book a very special paint the sunflowers getaway. Well, earlier in June, our dear friend Gary and Mark's mother came to visit the chateau. Mark's mother, Jerry, and Judy did not get to meet, but we decided to do a surprise phone call. Jerry, are you on the line? Yes, I'm on the line. Well, hello, Jerry. I'm Judy. I'm sorry we didn't get to meet. Did you enjoy your trip to the chateau and to France? I enjoyed it very much, but it was so overwhelming because there was so much to see. Well, it's it's uh, it's a big, big area. Have you ever been to Europe before? Uh, I was in Japan uh, back in the 50s. Well, Japan's a long way from Europe. I was going to say that's how much I know about the whole world is what's what. So, but uh, no, I enjoyed the trip very much. Well, that was good. Why didn't you get to meet Judy? Well, you asked Mark. I don't think he didn't ask me to join you. Oh, well, he's not, um, he's not around right at the moment. Uh, I'll ask him later. Uh, perhaps there well, were extenuating circumstances. Um, yes, because two of my friends said, well, I thought you were going to get to talk to Judy. And I said, no, Mark didn't want to. Oh, I'm so sorry. Judy would have loved to talk to you. Oh, I would have loved to, to talk to Judy about Mark. <laughs> well, what would you have said? He's a wonderful son. Oh, well, <laughs> that's lovely. It's not... Um, not really Judy's style, but I'm glad you think so. Uh, and... What was your favorite moment of the trip? Oh, uh, Philip wants to know, what was your favorite moment of the trip? I really enjoyed was seeing the chateau because it is, is something entirely different than, than where I live. And uh, I kept getting lost in, in the ah. chateau. And I... I had to keep walking to find out where I was going. Well, maybe next time we'll put some dotted lines on the ground in different colors and you just follow the color to get to the place you need to go. That's a good idea, but I enjoyed the trip very much and uh, I, I enjoyed everything that we did and it was almost too much for me. <laughs> well, next time, it'll be easier. It gets easier and easier every time you do it. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for being part of uh, the evening news at the Chateau, and we will definitely meet next time you come. Well, I was very disappointed, and I, I don't, don't know why Mark didn't ask me to talk to Judy. Maybe he didn't want me to. Oh, so. that could be. You never know with him. He's a handful. All right. All right, you have well, a lovely day. All right, thank you, Judy. Thank you. Well, isn't she lovely? It's really too bad that I did not get to meet her in person, but next time. Now, finally in the news tonight, Judy would like to discuss a little issue. You may have seen a video, I believe it was two ago, that uh, the editor of this video decided to set up like a game of Clue. And Judy was apparently dead. Gary had brought Judy a lovely plate of spaghetti before we filmed the news, and Judy, well, 
ate all of it and kind of went to sleep in the chair and apparently there was some sauce hanging down and, and Judy was kind of like this and, and someone photographed it. And well, all I can tell the editors of these videos is if you toy with Judy, Judy will get her revenge. Well, that's all the news from the Chateau. I'm Judy from Chateau Alvinside. You have a great day. Bye. So it's gone a little south as Ben works on the cabinet. As he has now removed the back of it. from the front and has basically completely deconstructed the thing. And there's the bottom. Yeah, in, in order to get to these joints, you put the mortise and tenons on. I needed to separate it from the floor to which it was nailed. So ah. I could really get in there and get an accurate cut and groove so it fits in nicely. So yeah. Well, there you go. Ben Pike, cabinet maker. <laughs> cabinet reading maker, I guess. <laughs> ben has cut down the cabinet and he's putting it into place. <laughs> and we're just doing a rough check on levelness. We're not leveling it quite yet, but just to kind of get an idea and we're getting a sense of how this is all fitting together. It's hard to tell, but on the right hand side, he, there was a double door panel and he cut the side off, took the extra door out, and slapped the side back on. And it wasn't quite that easy. <laughs> and when we put a top on this, the top will go all the way across and it will go into the window well, straight across. So I was just coming in to tell Ben something when I noticed that he had put the sink in. Didn't look very nice. So, uh, the sink's in place. He has it just enough height for the plywood and there'll be marble on top of that. And you can see he's built a wood framing structure for the sink to support the weight of it. It's looking pretty damn good. And Ben is being oddly silent. <laughs> Are you happy? Are you happy oh, with yeah, it all? Yeah, yeah. This, has been, this has been a really good project to work on. Yeah. And I haven't been on my hands and knees all for, for a month doing tiling, so this has been great <laughs> to doing this. Uh, it's, it's been tricky, but that's great because you get to fiddle around and stuff. Figure test, it all out. Adjust, test, adjust again. Yep. Uh, but as it stands, this is all now perfectly level all the way from there to the back of the ball. Yeah, this is all perfectly level. It's taken a lot of nipping and fine trimming, but it's there. Now it's going to get the joints fit so they, uh, so they slide in uh, easily. Excellent. That's it. Petit à petit. Or in English, little by little, the work continues and progress continues in the chateau. A very special thank you to our patrons whose contributions go directly to the renovation and the refurbishments in the chateau. And to all of our viewers, thank you very much for your love and your support. I'm Philip at Chateau Aventech. Well, I heard you learned at least one word. Bo bonjour, I think. Uh, bonjour, that's it. You got it. See, you can get around anywhere. Well, I think I could have, yes. But the funny thing is, Young and Restless, my favorite uh, thing that I watch on TV, keeps saying bonjour when they walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I caught I caught him twice, and the and and the two people are in France, and they're seeing Bonjour and walking out the door, and I think somebody should tell them about that. <laughs> <laughs>
I think maybe they have it wrong. 